Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Tech Tutor. Today we will be talking about Kafka Streams. I'm going to walk you through some of the code I created, also give you a demo. If you want to see this code, there'll be a link in the description, so just go ahead and click that there. Also, I'm going to put some other useful links there, and please take a moment to like and subscribe. All right, so let's talk about this project. Uh, as you can see, the project is called Kafka Streams. That's because for this video, I will be showing you how to set up a very simple Java Spring project to utilize Kafka Streams. And I know that some people have asked me to write code live on the fly. This actually took me a while to figure it out reading through all the documentation, so I thought I would save you time. Uh, maybe in the future I'll try to do an actual live coding video if that's really what people want to see. But uh, the way I look at it is hopefully I'm saving everybody time. This is just to be a starter project to get you started quickly and then you can pivot and add code as you'd like. But uh, if you take a look at this POM file, uh, you can use something like Spring Initializer to generate a basic POM project. And this particular one has Spring Boot Starter Web, which is pretty general for our web application. We usually use that. Kafka Streams, that's the important new dependency that we will be using. That is coming from Apache. And then we're also going to use the Spring Kafka dependency because that's going to let Spring manage some of the pieces of the Kafka uh, connections that we're using. And then I also like to use Lombok so that way I can avoid a lot of boilerplate code. And uh, if you didn't know this already from other videos or just you know prior knowledge, uh, what is managing the versions of these is actually this parent POM property. So by saying that the Spring Boot Starter Parent is 2.67, if you were to drill down into this, you'd start seeing where these versions are actually defined. Or if I hold Control and hover over it and I go into it here, you'll see how it takes you to the Spring Boot Starter Web POM as well. And then down here, that version will be defined. Okay, so moving on. For this project, we need to spin up a Docker instance. And I've heard you don't actually need Zookeeper anymore, but in the meantime, it's just easier for me to use what I am familiar with. So we have a Zookeeper instance uh, via Docker, as well as a Kafka instance with some minimal properties. I put links if you want to really read up more on each of these images, but we're not doing anything too crazy. Uh, we're just putting that it's going to be running on localhost. We're telling it where Zookeeper is running, which is on 2181. You're also telling it the uh, topics that we're going to have. So we're going to have two topics, an input topic, an output topic. So it'll be three partitions and one replica for each. And then I'm turning off the auto create topics enabled. All right, so we'll go to the application YAML. I am using this file just to define my input topic name and output topic name. You don't have to do this. Uh, I just think it's good practice to have configuration files to define things like this. That way, if you want to have like a prod environment and a QA environment, you can have different topic names. It's much easier. And then if you were to use a QA file, like let's say this was your prod file uh, in Spring, you could just do application dash QA. And then if you set the profile to QA, it'll automatically pick up that file instead. So now over here in Kafka configuration, uh, you can see I've also added more links trying to show you where I'm finding certain information when I'm reading through all of this documentation. So essentially we're using Lombok to create the getters and setters for the input and output topic. I'm also using the configuration properties annotation and configuration to initialize the being configuration properties is how it is picking up this property from the application YAML file, so Kafka and then Kafka input topic, Kafka output, top, output topic. And then as you can see, you need to add these two annotations so that way you can enable Kafka and Kafka streams. You can read up on some of that in the spring documentation. And this is an example of uh, some of the basic configurations you'd wanna add for your Kafka streams. So this is basically just naming the group to test streams. You're wanting to tell it where the Kafka uh, instance exists, which is localhost 9092. And then I'm using a wall clock uh, timestamp extractor. This is because I want to uh, 
use my Kafka streams on a timer. I will show you this in a minute. Basically, I want to be able to process messages within a certain time frame and group them together is what we're going to do in this particular video. All right, so let's take a look at the sample consumer. So in this class, you're going to see some annotations again, uh, SLF4J. I'm not actually using this, I realized. It's just, it's just a Lombok annotation to help you with logging. Uh, component is a spring annotation, just telling it that you want to create this bean. And then required args constructor is another convenience annotation from Lombok. So by making this uh, Kafka configuration final, it'll automatically inject it into the bean. This is the same thing as if you had a constructor for the class, so it's just my personal preference instead of having to write constructors. Then if you want to, you can read up in the documentation. I have provided a link to um, to see how you can kind of set up your Kafka stream here. Uh, this will also be available. All this code will be available in the description. I'll put a link to my GitHub so you'll be able to go ahead and follow the links you've seen in this video so far and read up as much as you want or just use the code that I provided. So when you set up the case stream, the first thing you need to do is pass it the input topic and you're going to tell it how you want to serialize the key and value. Next, because I'm specifically going to be using this session window, which there's different ways of uh, handling your stream. And if you want to window it, uh, you can do a tumbling window. There's examples in the documentation as well, but I wanted to do a session window. So I'm setting a window size of 10 seconds and a grace period of five seconds. What this means is that it's going to group messages within a 10 second window. And if there is another message that fits that same grouping that falls within another five second grace period. It will also lump that in to your uh, your stream here. What that means is like, let's say you had messages coming from, let's say user one is your key. So user one is sending messages, sends five messages within the first 10 seconds, sends another two within the next five seconds. So the five from the first window plus the two from the grace period will be combined together. You'll have seven messages grouped together. All right, so how are we grouping it? You wanna tell it that you're going to, well, I'm going to tell it at least that I wanna group it by the key. And so I'm going to also tell it how we're serializing this grouping. So still keeping the serialization the same for now. So it's going to be a string for the key, a string for the value. I told it how it's going to be windowed, which I just explained. And now your aggregate function. What do you want your output to be? So my goal is for a output to be an array list. So I want to group by key, and then I want to create a list of, of all those messages that I'm grouping. So for your aggregate function, the first thing you're saying is that when you have your key value and your aggregate, which your aggregate is what are you pushing all of these messages into? This happens to be a list because we're defining it right there. So my list has been created. I want to push the value from the first message into the list. And now when you're also comparing the second value, how are you adding the second value if you were to uh, have the grace period? So how do you end up combining the two? Well, for this one, I just kept it simple. That first list from this window and the second list from this window, I'm just going to add all the values from the second list. So let me also rephrase this first part. This aggregate here, this list, will be used for all of the messages that are within the window. And then this is for the grace period. Lastly, you're going to specify your serialization for your output. And so for mine, I'm still keeping the key as a string, but I had to specify a way to uh, change the value to a list. So I have a custom serialization. There are built-in ones that come with the Kafka library. So string was already built in, but you'll see that I had to create a custom one for list. After that, you uh, add the to stream method. And then this is something I realized is that if you don't map the key value 
you'll actually get some garbage values. I believe that's because it seems that maybe the key is uh, generating some extra values when it generates like a windowed key. So in order to get rid of those uh, random characters, I added this line to change the key value back to just the original key we were grouping it by. And then lastly, you want to say uh, where it is going, which is to our output topic. And once again, specifying the serialization of, uh, of the message going to that output topic, which is going to be string in a list. So if we take a look at the custom uh, serdes class, which is just serialization and deserialization, you can see here, I actually was just reading from documentation to kind of get an idea of how to do this. So you want to specify your serial, uh, serializer and your deserializer. So incoming is a JSON string, outgoing is going to be a uh, array list. So we're taking that string and then sticking all those JSON strings into an array list. And then lastly, you have a very basic uh, application class. This actually gets generated when you use something like Spring Initializer. But if you're not familiar with it, you'll need this Spring Boot application annotation to also start up your app. All right, that is it for the code. And now I will demo how it works. All right, so first let's go ahead and spin up our Kafka instance using our Docker Compose file. So it will be in the base of uh, the base folder, which is Kafka Streams. You can see it right here. So in order to go ahead and run that, we're just in our terminal Docker Compose up dash D. And there you can see it has started. For you, if this is the first time, it'll probably download the uh, container image first and then it will start it. Um, yeah, that's it. You just start it with that. And then the next thing you'll do is you'll right click this Kafka Streams application and click Run. All right. And now our application is running. So the next thing I want to show you is that we will use something, a tool called Conductor. And it's a free tool, or at least it's a free tier still to this day. And I will utilize Conductor to show you how you can publish messages to the Kafka uh, topic, that is our input topic, and then we will consume from the output topic and see our merged messages, which is being merged using the Kafka streams. So let's jump over to Conductor now. All right, after you open Conductor, after installing it, it should look something like this. They're probably gonna ask you to register. I just registered with their free plan, pretty easy. And it looks like they also give you the ability to start a local Kafka cluster using Conductor, but we're using Docker, that's my preference. So uh, we don't need to do that. And what you're going to do is you're going to say you're connecting to an existing cluster. So we'll click this button. I move this over so that you could see it. All right, over here, we're going to just name our cluster local because it's our own local cluster. Uh, for our particular use case, it will be running on localhost. So the example that they have for um, where the host is is correct, and the default ports are also provided there. So we're just going to do exactly that. So localhost 9092. And then Zookeeper is optional now, but we're running Zookeeper because it's just what I'm used to. Um, you know, if you want to move on to Kafka without Zookeeper, feel free. But for now, we're going to use it. So localhost 2181. And then we will do test Kafka connectivity and it connected. So we're going to click save. All right. Now you will also click on the cluster you just set up here. All right. Let me move this over so you can see it on my screen. All right. And there is an input topic, an output topic. And also there's this topic that the Kafka Streams library created. So we created these two with our configuration files and Kafka Streams. Uh, library created this one for doing the aggregation. So what you will need to do is create a consumer and a producer. So we'll go ahead and create a consumer so we can read from our output topic. We we'll move this over and we're going to say we want to read from the output topic and click start. All right, so that is waiting for data. I'll just shrink this down a little bit so we could fit both of them on the screen. Okay, and now we will create a producer. <coughs> 
and it's asking which topic do you want to produce to? So we are going to produce to our input topic. And here's the important part. We are aggregating by our key. So for our particular situation of what we have coded, we want to have a key that will be in common for our messages so that way they can be aggregated together. Uh, so let's just keep this simple so I can quickly change it on the fly. We'll do like a key of A and a key of B. And then our value, because we use the JSON serialization, it is going to be a JSON string. And so uh, we'll just call this message. And then our message will also just be characters. So we'll just start with A. And so we're going to go ahead and fire these off. The important part is we need to fire enough messages within our 10 second window and our five second grace period so they will get aggregated together. Uh, as you can see, there's other options here for things you can do as well with Conductor. You could add headers or uh, click the options or use this flow tab. I haven't actually read very much in the flow tab, hadn't had use for it, but feel free to play around. All right, so for the key, we'll set it to A. And now I'm going to uh, move a little quickly just so that way I can get enough messages through to show you. And there should most likely be a, a message that falls outside the window. We'll see. Um, I'm not really trying to make it happen, but it, it could happen. So uh, with the key A, sending message A, going to fire off a couple messages of A and maybe change it a little bit. So A, A, we'll send over a B. And how about we send over a C? And now really quickly, let's also have another key. So we'll send over two C's and maybe a D. Maybe another D if I didn't click that other one. Not sure if that one went through. I misclicked it. And let's do an E. Okay. So let's see what we get on our consumer. Here you go. I actually didn't have any fallout of the grace period, uh, or rather after the second window, so we didn't end up with a, a third one, but we could have had one of our A messages, or B messages rather, since I did B last. One of our Bs could have been on the separate side of things. Uh, maybe I should have fired off another A to showcase this, then it would have most likely fell into a second window. But as you can see, the messages that I fired off for A, all of those JSON strings have been combined into one final output array. So you have A, A, B, C, and then for B, you have C, C, D, and E. So this is just showing you how you can aggregate your messages together. So as it goes into an input topic, as individual messages, you can combine them and basically denormalize it into one single message. So that way, you know, when it gets to the end of wherever your Kafka topics are leading you, you could have uh, easier processing at the end to process one big message rather than a bunch of small messages uh, for like, let's say, you know, the same user or whatever. Maybe you're trying to group together. Maybe it's like buy orders. I think I've seen people talk about using this for like perhaps like stock trading or something to that effect. But yeah, here's just a good example for you. Now, I hope that this makes a lot more sense now that you're getting to see it visually. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. If you want to see any more about this particular topic, or if you want me to cover any other topics that you're really interested in, please let me know that as well. And please take a moment to like and subscribe. Thank you.